Hey everybody, I'm Janet with Magic in the Metal, and tonight I'm going to show you a little bit of my electrolytic etching. What I have is a piece of copper, which I have covered with a resist or something that will not allow the metal to be etched. And then I scraped away the actual resist to form a picture. And it's not a very good lighting for this position to show you. But I went and drew a picture by scraping into a resist on my copper. Then I covered the backside with nail polish and then double stick taped some foam to it. And that, in theory, will allow this piece of copper to float in the etching solution, which tonight I'm going to be using Cooper Nitrate. Here we have the setup in which this will happen. All this here is what I will use. And this right here is a griddle. And I use that to transfer my images. I heat it up and transfer images onto my metal using that and my trusty iron. Over here, I can introduce you to my bowl of Cooper nitrate. And what I did was I mixed it to be 25% Cooper nitrate, the CuNO32 solution for etching copper and silver. Okay, I used distilled H2O water, as you can see here. Here's my etching bath, and this time I'm going to be doing a horizontal etch. So the theory is my Dr. Meter rectifier here is going to provide electricity through the positive, right, which will lead down in into the copper piece when I have it all set up. We're going to run electric current into this, right, as it floats upside down in the Cooper nitrate bath. And in the bottom of my Cooper nitrate bath, sorry for all the movement, is a screen mesh, a stainless steel screen mesh with a piece of copper poked into it, let up for the negative line to bring the, po uh, the power back out. If that makes any sense, we're completing a circuit, right? By running electricity from the rectifier into the copper that will be floating upside down. And then the electricity will pass through the exposed areas of the copper as it's laying in the bath. And then that will basically, in essence, pull molecules of copper off of this plate, causing the exposed areas to deepen. And those molecules will flow through the electrolytic electrolyte, right? And then adhere on the steel mesh at the bottom because the current that goes from the red to the black will complete the circuit and that is how the power will leave. So here, then following that, I will use distilled water to rinse. So I have a rinse bath here. And then I have, to neutralize any kind of acidic action, a base, which is baking soda. And then I will put distilled water with the baking soda and scrub it to neutralize any continued etching action when I feel I am done etching. And then to remove the resist from my copper plate and the nail polish that I use to cover the back, I have acetone. And of course, rubber gloves. Good ventilation, as you can see. Eye protection. Tie your hair up. Don't have sleeves in the way, right? Uh, a lot of people are suggesting, you know, potentially uh, fumigation. Sorry, <laughs> not fumigation, fume removers. But uh, 
This is actually known for being a safer etchant solution. It's um, known for not having an off-gassing. So they're actually, if you're going to be etching in the house, there actually is different options for etching, and this is one of the safest ones you can go with. The scientific molecular byproduct of the etching with cupric nitrate of copper is creating more copper. So you're in essence having a perfect cycle. And this is based on literature written by Ben Dory, which I can provide a link to a PDF that he has written some time ago that offers a lot of detailed chemistry information on all of this process here. So here I am, I have where I'm going to be etching. And from what I understand, you want to maintain about two amps on your rectifier and then wherever the volts lie that's you know not necessarily important if you've got two amps pushing and it's making a complete circuit you should be good that's the theory it's a lot of like experimenting and playing and and come and go with that but uh you can you can do a lot of experimenting on your own and it depends on the type of thickness of metal and the gauge, whatever, the size and surface area. It is suggestible that on the negative side here, right, on the cathode, you want to have the electricity is going to the screen mesh instead of just a plate for a better etch, theoretically, because it has less surface area, and you want to have the screen mesh about the same size as your piece. And then the less surface area actually helps for a smoother, cleaner edge and less striations. Also, because I understand that it's um, better for your etching to have a agitator that causes a vibration. Then I also have this wonderful back massage thing that was given to me like 15 years ago as a gift by my ex-mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> and I have never used it for anything except for etching. But I put it right here on a rubber mat. My whole table, it's kind of a folding table. It's aluminum here, so it has a the ability to have some vibration. So when I kick on that vibrator, it's going to agitate the solution and cause the etching to not have any striations where the metal is removed from the copper plate. Okay, so I'm going to pause this video and I will continue on once I get all my little alligator clips in place and set my thing into the bath. So just give me just a moment. 